Hey, hey, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? So uh, I'm pretty excited about today, folks. So anyone you know that wants to add years to their life and life to their years, tag them in this video, share this in any holistic wellness groups, anybody that's uh, all about all natural healing uh, or just likes a good old fashioned story of somebody overcoming the odds, tag them in this. Uh, feel free to share this into those groups as well. We're gonna go ahead and get right into it. I am so excited to have our guest on today. He's gonna join us here in just a minute. Uh, my buddy JJ, who is author of this book right here, Flying Against the Odds, which I'm not even a big reader. I'm big on Audible, right? That's, that's more my speed, Audible. And uh, so, he told me that I need to at least read the first 10 pages uh, just to give some honest feedback. And before I uh, knew what was going on, I had read half the book. Okay, so uh, it's, it's pretty impressive because for me, I, I've got this book by Gary Vaynerchuk back here that I bought a few years ago and I still haven't even gotten past the first chapter. So. I'm going to bring him on real quick. Phenomenal guy. Let's see. I love how, uh, let's see. Bring JJ. I, uh, I love how content now, or, uh, technology nowadays has brought us together. So, JJ, what's up, my friend? How are you doing? Fantastic. Uh, thank you very much, um, my friend. Uh, what a pleasure to be uh, with you all. And... Um, Looks like a very nice day on your side. Oh man, it's gorgeous. There's hardly even a cloud in the sky. So I was just telling everybody about how I really, really appreciate the value that you share in your book, Flying Against the Odds. Um, you tried, so I'm not a big reader. And you told me, just read the first 10 pages. And I was like, yeah, no, I'm gonna. And I think I told you that for about two weeks. And then finally, I did. And before I knew it, I had already made it halfway through the book and uh, it's so well written and it's funny. I had no idea. I've known you for over a year. I had no idea you were so funny and uh, you've got some really good stories in there. So first of all, welcome. What part of the world are you in right now? Um, well, Stan, I'm in, um, in Biarritz, uh, which is the southwest of France. If you drive two hours alongside the Atlantic coast from Bordeaux, where the, the good wine is, um, you'll find yourself uh, in Biarritz, which is the mecca of surfing in Europe. And we're basically 20 minutes away from San Sebastian, the most incredible city in Spain. Nice. Yeah, I've, uh, guys, I've seen pictures of where JJ lives. And it, it looks like something out of a movie. It looks like a little slice of heaven. Now, I'm not going to try to pronounce your last name. How do you pronounce that? Uh, Trochon. Trochon. Yeah. David. Yeah, it's uh, okay. either uh, the South African way or, or, or the French way. Got you, got you. Okay, cool. So, for everyone that hasn't read the book, Flying Against the Odds, which we're going to tell you how to get it at the end, but you definitely want to make sure that you pick it up. Um, you know, you, you had a really close brush with death. Uh, and, you know, here in Kentucky, over half of the people in Kentucky either have or will have cancer throughout their life. It's, it's scary. Uh, matter of fact, leukemia is the number one cause of death in children ages 1 to 14 here in the United States. Um, I mean, it's, it's wild how many people have or will have cancer or be faced with this. Folks, if you guys uh, either have had cancer or someone in your family, either on your mother's side or your father's side, have had cancer, I want to see a hashtag cancer in the comments section. And I think you'll be blown away by how many people um, have been touched with this. So I want to ask you. You know, what one, what kind of cancer was it? Fill me in a little bit on how that diagnosis uh, impacted you. Um, yeah, Austin, uh, it was 2003 and um, um, without, you know, any uh, forward call, um, I had no 
no uh, events or um, you know effects that, that that actually told me that I had something was wrong with me, and um, I had kidney cancer. Um, you know, uh, like a seven centimeter, you know, whatever it is, uh, a few inches <laughs> tumor on the on the kidney, and um, um, and um, yeah, I had to be operated quickly because um, you know I had a, a lot of uh, blood in the urine, which is. You, you know, really the opposite way around. And it was such a, a shock, you know, and, and so, um, um, you know, I had to, I have to basically uh, stop thinking and then just, uh, and just, just, you know, uh, bulldozer on um, and, and start thinking, you know, then afterwards, you know, once, once uh, I had, op I had been operating and then things went on from there. I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine. And the way that you describe it in the book, um, you can really feel uh, it's almost like you're going through it with you at the moment in real time. You can really feel what you felt. So, you know, how has your, your brush with death changed your views of life and the world? Well, um, uh, you know, I was just a uh, uh, just a normal bloke, basically. Uh, uh, when I was uh, I was 40, 42, 43 when it happened, and um, and uh, I was a like a you know a sports guy. Uh, I was a high level sports person when I was younger than that, and uh, uh, I just kept you know I just wanted to keep going and um, realized that um, um, something had changed in me. Uh, that um that's when you realize you know you hear you have um there's so many so many things that really don't matter uh, that all of us make a big deal out of you know me included um and then when something happens um like this uh it's it, it just has all the real meaning of of what life is you know really about and what your priorities are um, you hear that all the time, but unless it happens to you, then you, you know, you, it, it hits you basically. And um, it was only the first part because um, they were expecting metastasis all over me um, uh, because it was quite advanced already. Uh, and, uh, you know, I've, I've done what I had to do, whether it's luck, whether it's luck and something else. Um, they only started coming like nine years later. And then we counted up for two years up to 26 uh, tumors uh, in both lungs. And um, so, yeah, so this is when uh, I was told that I was cooked. Uh, and so uh, um, and I said, no way. And, uh, you know, I, I have the mind of a you know, researcher really, uh, you know, biology was um, uh, my, my favorite you know, subject when I was young. And um, I just decided to, um, from there on, to put all my, my resources, my brain resources into uh, research on the metabolism. And that's how I, I, I got to um, reach uh, all these, um, uh, you know, scientists, um, oncologists, uh, biologists. Um, they're, um, each of them are pretty much the number one worldwide in their uh, approaches, whether it's ketogenesis you know like the ketogenic diet you, you hear of uh whether it's fasting whether it's uh, anti-angiogenesis the only way that a tumor grows being fed by blood vessels capillaries um so um you know you learn so many stuff and uh, so much so much in it that um i just i don't know i, I managed to reach every one of them it took me a while and um, they were so impressed that I know their subjects so well, uh, but then they didn't know that I also uh, had um, learned so much stuff uh, on different subjects, different approaches. Yeah. And so my, my idea and uh, the, the idea that I came up with was to actually bring everything together to make it a real, you know, um, a real uh, a powerful approach metabolic approach that hitting the cancer from different sides and that's what it's all about yeah i am um, so there's a gentleman that gives you a um 
a review in your book, uh, Dr. David Quinn. And I, I, I want to read this review real quickly. So JJ has a couple pages of people that are professors and doctors uh, of all types, uh, several pages, in fact, that um, they give him, you know, from all over the world, they give him some great reviews. But I really like what Dr. David Quinn, the medical director of the USC Norris Cancer Hospital Clinics in Los Angeles, what he said. He said, this work presents unique and important questions for medicine and cancer therapy woven into the narrative of a personal journey, touching aspects of life we can all relate to and culminating in a victorious fight against cancer. This book will appeal to a wide audience and Mary's educational endeavor with inquisitive dissection of the spirit of answering questions that some are scared to ask. You know, so I think that really that really sums up what you were just talking about and your approach uh, that you had in dealing with cancer. So by the way, guys, it's almost worth getting this book just to read what people say uh, about cancer. You know, some of these professors and doctors and how, you know, the traditional way of treating it is just the opposite of the way that we should be treating it. Uh, it's wild. It's wild. I really hope I never uh, have to deal with it. But if I do, uh, I'll either be contacting JJ uh, or if I'm like 95 years old and JJ at that point will be like 100 and uh, you know, he'd be like 200 and something years old. So, uh, so I'll, I'll be picking this book up uh, for sure because it gives you the keys and handling. So in this book, you got into some really deep emotions when talking about your family, you know, your, uh, your daughter, your son. Uh, so, how has your relationship with your family been impacted uh, since discovering you have stage four cancer and then overcoming it? Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a tricky question because, uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot of uh, humanity. There's a lot of emotion, uh, emotional stuff that comes with, uh, obviously, uh, you know, I'm a family man like you are, um, and like uh, most of my friends are. And so we, we realize how important uh, the family bonds are, you know, and uh, at the time, um, uh, my, my, my daughter, Kelly, and my son, Jeff, uh, uh, who's in Australia now, far away, you know, like uh, on, the other side, on the other side of the world for me, um, they were 11 and nine. And so, um, um, it's funny how they, they, they react, you know, they reacted to the book. They're both very, very proud, but, um, Jeff, who, who pretty much like you, uh, you know, has a lot of uh, trouble to read a book, uh, and, and, and pretty much never reads. And he started reading the first page, not really knowing what to expect. And he said, you know, dad, within 48 hours, I had finished the book. I couldn't it's believe so it. Weird. It's the first time in my life, you know? Yeah. And, and, uh, and my, my daughter, uh, who's, you know, she was older when it happened. And uh, obviously, um, you know, the different, um, uh, well, years went on where I had multiple uh, uh, surgeries. Uh, I, I have never had, I never had any of the uh, uh, treatments, uh, chemical treatments, uh, which is the thing that, that really excites uh, some of the, uh, scientists uh, and doctors that I, I keep working with. Um, and and my, my daughter was often often there uh, to um, uh, at the hospital uh, at, you know, among the different um, times where I was, I had these surgeries. So I think she was shocked um, many times and that um, because she had lived um, this, this story when it first started, in 20 in, in 2003 um uh she um she probably was shocked for you know we i was you know going through a divorce as well you know my first wife and uh, the mother of uh you know my my kids and so it was it was traumatic so she was maybe you know scared of what she was going to read and so she i don't think she even finished the book um i don't even know you know, and my son right away said, wow, boom. Probably you know, very emotional, I would say. 
Yeah, yeah. You know, she was a little bit older, so she understood stuff, you know, more, more so and, and quicker than, than my, my son did, you know, when, when, when it first happened. And then my son went to Australia, like, uh, uh, almost, you know, 10 years ago. And he, he's a resident and he's going to get his uh, Australian passport as well. So, um, you know, he's been far away and, and he's, you know, the, the, the emotional side of things, you know, is like you know, physically taken away a bit, you know. So even if we, uh, we're on, you know, face FaceTime or, or, or uh, WhatsApp, you know, pretty, you know, often, it's not the same thing. And he, he wasn't there as Kelly was during the multiple operations or surgeries. Yeah, well, you know, it's, uh, it's definitely interesting. And it's very obvious that, um, you know, that you are a family man, that you care a lot about the family. And then whenever, whenever you're reading this and you talk about how it, um, at the time, impacted uh, your children and, and, you know, just your, your relationship, uh, and, and kind of brought you all even closer together. Um, it's, it's interesting. Um, that was one of my favorite parts of the book that I've read so far. Now I'm, I'm about three quarters of the way through it. So I haven't even finished the whole book yet, but, uh, as busy as I am, I have made for made time. Uh, but it was wild how quickly I got to the, uh, the halfway mark. So one thing that I really want you to touch on is because i I talked to a lot of people that um, specifically Americans, that uh, they're just gonna eat whatever they're gonna eat, right? They don't optimize for health. They don't really even try to eat healthy. They eat whatever tastes good. Um, I had a buddy of mine out here who owns a mobile detailing service. He was detailing my car earlier today. And so um, they were detailing, talking about how uh, he has diabetes and the gentleman that was helping him says he doesn't even try to eat healthy. He just eats whatever he eats, burgers and shakes and all that stuff. So to the person that believes that it's just too much work uh, to eat healthy and to optimize for a healthy lifestyle, what would you say to them and what guidance could you maybe offer those people? Um, well, you know, Austin, um, it's, it's pretty much uh, straightforward. Um, and that's due to the fact that um, um, I, I started, you know, helping people um, because I was all over the news. Basically, I was on a national news in France. I was uh, I was I, I've been on, on newspapers, magazines, not only in France, but uh, some other places of, uh, of the world. And so um, when I organized uh, with um, uh, basically my oncologist who happened to be uh, the number one uh, kidney oncologist in Europe, and not only in France, but in Europe, the chairman of ESMO, the European Society of Medical Oncology. Um, uh, we both, and I brought the idea, and I brought the structure of um, this, this major international conference at uh, Gustave Roussy, the Institute Gustave Roussy, which is the leading cancer center in Europe. So the communication department of, of Gustave Roussy actually sent the news all over the place and, and it, it landed you know in in, um, in different part of the world uh, different parts of the world um, in the cancer centers so I started being contacted by a whole bunch of people which I wasn't prepared and and some of them for like the past two or three years now are doctors and um, you know, like, like, I think, I think I told you about three weeks ago, I had an oncologist from the US and he's not the first one who comes for help because he knows what standard of care offers. And then, you know, he, he wants to do more, just like the whole bunch of us. And I've now, started, you know, I realized that I've gone over 3,300 people, you know, following, trying to bring, you know, this help that all this knowledge that we are now bringing out. And that doesn't come from me. I just have the, I say, capacity to bring this all together and make sense of it and then explain it to people. But that comes from, like you mentioned, those doctors, um, David Quinn. David Quinn is, um, as you said, the medical director of Norris. Norris is a huge cancer center uh, in Los Angeles. Um, and uh, he was the first to start um, the uh, clinical trials uh, from the first research of Walter Longo, who is um, 
uh, the, uh, uh, the, the director of gerontology in Los Angeles, USC. And um, uh, the, the, his research was groundbreaking. And, and David Quinn said, well, let's do it. Let's start you know, uh, planning uh, uh, like a floor on, in a hospital and see what fasting could bring with the treatments. Yeah. And since then, we, we went on and on and on forward. And we have so much knowledge, uh, including in Europe from different uh, hospitals, clinics, um, you know, in, Germ in Germany, uh, uh, Charité, the largest hospital in Europe, is involved in, in all the research. And so we know exactly what eating badly brings. Um, and uh, it's, it's, as you said earlier on, you said in your state, one out of two. Well, you know, it's not in your state. Unfortunately, it's now coming, knocking on the door. It was like 10 years ago, we used to say one out of three, but we're, you know, getting closer to one out of two, which is now actually. Um, and, you know, all the stuff that, that we're eating, there's an explosion of different type of cancers. Younger people get cancers a lot more. Oh, yeah. And the intestinal tract, you know, colorectal cancer is uh, number three for men, uh, number two for women. Um, and, and, you know, that's got, you know, uh, we've, we've got a lot of answers for this. Um, and so, you know, it tells you basically that the, what I live every day to try to help people. There's a guy eight hours driving from me, uh, phoned me yesterday morning. And he says, JJ, this is, this is what I've done. Uh, they gave me 25% um, uh, of uh, success over five years. Um, if I'm good, in five years, I should be dying, but it's only 25% success. And that's the best they can do. So he said, this is all I'm, I, I just want to do a lot more things to help myself, maybe to help the treatments. Can I come and see you? I said, my friend, you're welcome. We'll prepare your room. So 10 minutes later, he was in his car, drove, arrived in the evening yesterday, spent the night, we briefed, I took him in front of the ocean this morning and um, yeah, he was happy. He took control and he drove back. That's and Austin, this is why I'm doing it. Because this is just, um, th we have, well now we're having so many results, positive results, you know, and there again, those are doctors, oncologists, biologists that are working hard all over the world, different places. And, um, uh, and, and they're, they just want to get through uh, because they know that uh, with some of the simple things that we can do, food is one of them. Yeah. Don't come late. That's your question is this, don't come late. Do something now because I live this every week, many times a week. People saying, I should have done it. I knew it. And then this is panic time. And, I, and it's, it's just happens too many times. And when it happens to a 10 month old of parents realizing that you know, something is happening or kids, you know? Um, so it, it's really worth, you know, fighting for, um, you know, trying to, to get this whole thing started for everyone that to teach people. Sometimes people do not have money to buy a box of aspirin in some part of the world. And this is why initially the, I had the idea to write the book and publish it on Amazon because Amazon gets almost everywhere in the world. And so they can grab a bunch of information, which I put, you know, I, I, I was careful to put it on in a, in a story, easy to read, so that people knew that there was something out there that they could do. And then eventually, you know, anybody can contact me. I'm very approachable. Uh, I've, I've never been a big head. I've got my feet uh, well stuck on the ground, even though I was an airline pilot for uh, nearly 40 years. And I finished on the Airbus 380, this monster plane. Um, but yeah, I'm grounded, uh, you know, well grounded. And, and um, my mission uh, is, is actually, you know, to, um, to help people get through um, uh, uh, most of uh, what they live in during the illness, but before people get ill, 
the people get sick you know it's really really worth it to do simple things to slow down the rate of of illnesses or uh, maybe um, calm down with uh, the percentage of uh, of people getting sick yeah 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 so um, one thing that uh, so you're right just a simple discipline to eat right you know uh, avoid certain things uh, you know sugars and yeah. stuff like that and really focus on you know eating more fruits and vegetables the right kinds and you know just uh, just in general uh, being mindful that you're either uh, feeding illness or fighting illness with whatever that you put in your body one thing that I've done is once a week I do a blue-green algae fast and so I just drink a lot of water and I have a little bit of blue-green algae uh, four times throughout the day and so that I've noticed has it's helped me tremendously in lots of different ways it's improved the quality of my skin uh, my energy levels my stamina it's helped me with my sleep all sorts of stuff so yeah yeah uh, eating right hydrating right I think is, is an easy discipline that you can you know over time you can get used to um, you started touching on it a little bit but before I ask my last question I would like to say that you know you you strike me as a very driven man nowadays what drives you and what is your mission today um you know like i started saying a little bit you know i've um because i didn't know what i was getting into and um um you know uh being publicized uh pretty much uh all over the world now uh, i wasn't expecting that you know and and it, it shocked me at the beginning and then i got used to it and i said well just get on with it and you know do what you have to do and so i started helping people over four years ago and um um you know three thousand three hundred people pass now and I'll, I'll tell you that's a lot of people every single week many times a week almost every day um i have lived so many stories with people um you know um i got into the family stories uh to try to get the best out of we could do to help the person um the medical side is great what we have you know and, and i have so many uh, doctor friends but um i also have some of those doctor friends are are totally into uh learning new stuff now that uh, will complement um what is um what is called standard of care and um so you know seeing those terrible stories sometimes crying with the family over the phone um, for you know evident uh, difficult reasons or sometimes happy reasons where um, a, a guy just comes out of a hospital you know just past the door and you know the first person he calls is me because they were expecting uh, to go on with surgery and, and um, uh, treatment and then suddenly uh, the last scan and, and testing shows that uh, basically it's totally stable and, and, and sometimes regressing. And so, you know, the doctor sometimes it happened that it, he, you know, he said, well, I, I'm very happy for you. I don't understand, but I'm super happy. <laughs> let's stand by. Right. Let's, let's, let's put it on hold. And that's, the, you know, just that alone is my mission, because when you lift that over the phone, or camera or the guy comes to see you around even though he lives uh you know eight hours away by car um well it's just worth it it's just fantastic you know yeah saving lives impacting lives in that way uh guys if you haven't read it if you don't have a copy of it you need to go out there today uh immediately and you need to get this book for a couple of reasons one it's a fun read. It's an easy read. Uh, you know, we've had a couple of people say that they read it in a day or two. You know, mm. uh, I don't even read books. I do Audible, okay, typically. And uh, I read half the book before I, before I knew what was going on. I lost time and just read half the book already. It's fun to read. It's interesting. Uh, and there's so much value in the book. I didn't even make it to the first chapter before I was highlighting things. 
and circling things and making notes. So um, Flying Against the Odds uh, by my good friend, JJ Trahan. I, I, I know I murdered that. Americans, That's fine. We, we can't do it, do it, do it justice. But um, where can people get your book and where can people connect with you? Um, you know, Amazon um, uh, is, uh, like I said, it's the easiest way because you can get it uh, in, in many countries. Uh, I've got people uh, ordering it in South Africa, uh, in Australia, uh, in other countries in, in, in Africa as well. They've managed to, even though it's, it's tougher for Amazon to deliver there, but they do. And um, um, I'm, I'm what you call the citizen of the world. You know, I lived, um, you know, some of, the, some of my time on, on, on this planet, uh, I in America. I was a student uh, in Toledo, Ohio. I was in uh, LA. I was in South Carolina, Conway, <laughs> wow. and uh, near Myrtle Beach. And so um, um, I, I made friends, uh, friends sometimes that are still, you know, uh, we still have a very strong relationship to this day and um, from, from quite a few countries. And so it's why it's, it's so, so important for me uh, that uh, they, all these families sometimes in, in a bad way with not much money are able to put their hands on some information and how to reach me. Well, you know, Facebook's fantastic, uh, Messenger. I've got a site, I've got a, 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 um, um, a website, uh, jjjeanjacquestrachon.com. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, I, I came out with a checklist, a simple checklist. I, I kept the pilot way. Um, uh, there again, I explain uh, um, what I've done. Uh, you know, the book is a story but the checklist is short, but it's, it's very, um, very precise on, on what is out there to, for people to be able to do. It's not a to-do list um, that could not be because that would be dangerous because ketogenesis uh, in certain ways, uh, a ketogenic approach or diet, as people call it, even though I don't like the word diet, uh, can, be, can do wonders for some people and can can come you know can't to be dangerous for others yeah. so you got to know what you're doing and you got to take the whole you know metabolism conditions because we're all different and the illnesses are different we have a a past you know that is obviously different um and so uh fasting is the same thing fasting is uh, absolutely incredible and and the results that we have showing now we have seven uh international publications from uh the leading uh, fasting medical fasting center in Europe, um, uh, in Germany. Uh, I have a friend, uh, a, a GP, a doctor in France, who's uh, recently, about a year ago, opened the Medical Academy um, of Fasting, and he's training doctors that put their hands up and they want to be trained all over France now, which is incredible. We 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 would never think about five years ago that that this could be possible, and still because we're doing this. Uh, you know, they want me to, to be the godfather of this whole thing. And, and you should like, be. I feel like I, I just want to go surfing, right? You know, this is uh, uh, the surf is good. You know, again, this morning I saw. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and, and so, um, yeah, uh, that's that's the, the way that people can reach me. Um, uh, they can go on uh, my YouTube channel, Rethinking Cancer 2017. Uh, Rethinking Cancer 2017, that's the whole title. And they'll be able to see um, this incredible conference that had never been done before. And you, you were talking about doctors that I actually mentioned, I mentioned in, in, in the beginning of my book. You're talking about Bernard Scudier, who's the uh, um, uh, president of the European Society of Medical Oncology. You're talking about Lauren Zivoga. She's probably number one in terms of microbiome research in the world, the Chinese and the Americans fight between them to have to have her try to have her once in the country to do a, a major conference. Um, you know, David Quinn, you, know, you mentioned um, one of the top guys uh, on this planet uh, for uh, for um, a prostate cancer. Um, you know, all these guys, they're only Thomas Seafried. Tom Seafried in Boston is the uh, father or the, 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 the godfather of ketogenesis for cancer. And, and we're, we're such close friends. And, and um, 
William Lee, he's the president of the Angel uh, Genesis Foundation, uh, who um, wrote a great book as well. And uh, he's, he wrote uh, the foreword of the book. Uh, he just, he said to me, I'd be honored to, 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 you know, to write it. And of course, Walter Longo is the most advanced biologist today uh, um, for uh, fasting against cancer. Um, he, he recently opened with a whole team um, a clinic in Los Angeles that is pretty unique um, because um, they're using standard of care with uh, different uh, oncologists and specialists, but also um, um, uh, food uh, specialists. And they're um, because people are, you know, uh, uh, wealthy people are donating, they're able to treat people who do not have money. And that's unique in the US. Yeah. And uh, they can't accept everyone, but they're accepting, accepting as many people as possible. And in March last year, before the pandemic, um, they made me come to LA. And um, he offered me the position of director of development of the whole concept. And so I came back to Biarritz and then, you know, the pandemic. So I'm still, we're still talking. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we're going ahead, you know, and forward. And it's why the information must flow and this is worth it you know it's like a human chain we must all help each other and everyone knows that they i'm approachable the, you guys can get you know to me via you know message me i know i have a lot of people go, coming in every day but i do my very best to answer everyone slowly take my time but you know that's worth it because there are so many fantastic doctors on board and uh, i'm just a guy who like I said, you know, I have the ability to get all this thing together and, and make sense of it. And, and that, you know, blew some of the doctors that, you know, didn't think about this. But they said to me, basically, JJ, that should, have, that should have come from us, not from you. And yeah, you know, so we're a great team. And um, some of them, you know, like William Lee recognizes um, that um, patients, uh, who can, you know, bring something that are so valuable because they have uh, not only the theory, uh, but they know what's going on because they've been in there. And so, you know, when the Pope asked the Vatican to unite as many countries as possible in Rome, 160 countries represented. And, um, for a huge conference on nutrition for tomorrow because malnutrition is is deadly and it's going to be catastrophic even more so uh, in the years to come who do they ask to open the conference dr william lee and that's the guy who writes my forward so that's pretty amazing you know and that's why people should you know get their, their hands on the book and uh, just read it and come back to me if they have questions. You know, we're there to help. I'm not working alone. I'm working with all these guys. Absolutely. Yeah, so whenever we wrap this up, if you don't mind, go in the comments section and just drop your uh, your website so people can go to your website and, and perform that checklist. Sure. But uh, you're obviously very passionate about helping people, not just with beating cancer, but preparing to not have cancer and to just have That's a, a thing. healthy life, you know? So folks, once again, I just gotta say, this book is incredible. Uh, Flying Against the Odds by my good friend, JJ. Go to Amazon right now and get your copy of this. You might even buy five or 10 copies and just share them. I mean, it's, it's really a great and interesting read and full of incredible value. JJ, thank you so much for taking some time with myself with the people that are viewing. Guys, if you see, if you found this valuable, let me see a hashtag value in the comments section. If this has been real hot, throw some fire emojis down there. Share this to your groups. Uh, tag some people that you know want to live a longer, healthier life. And uh, once again, JJ, appreciate you so much, brother. God bless you. Thank you. Thanks very much, guys. Thank you very much. Sure. All right, then.